Can you believe we use these clunky phones for over 50 years? You had tangled cords, spinning dials, and relying on an operator to route your call. Like this phone, those days are dead. And we have a new kid on the block, and it's called an AI caller. Imagine you have your own personal AI assistant that can make calls for you, answer questions, and even mimic your voice. It's like having a clone that never gets tired, never complains, and is always ready to chat. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through the reality of AI callers as they are today, an example of one we built for a Santa Claus calling service, and give you a quick overview of the most popular services you can use to build your own. There are literally tons of use cases for AI calling, and I'm gonna rapid fire 10 ideas you might have not even thought of near the end of the video. Now, if you don't know me, that's probably because this is my first YouTube video. I'm Mark, a data science manager by day and an AI automation agency owner by night. I've spent 10 years in the AI space and I've been operating my AI automation agency, Prompt Advisors, for almost two years now. You might have seen me on an interview or two or recently featured on CNBC for a few of the cool things we've been up to. I want to start off the video by giving a reality check of where we're at because just like every new AI opportunity we've seen in the past year, I'm seeing mega hype about calling. On the pro side, AI callers are really impressive when it comes to certain things. For starters, they can carry a conversation on with a pretty good level of nuance. It's not just robotic responses anymore, but they can actually understand context and respond appropriately. Sometimes they'll even respond back with tidbits of information you mentioned throughout the call to make it seem like it's actually listening to you. Another cool thing is that you can load them up with a ton of relevant information in their knowledge base. Now, for the time being, the less knowledge you have, the better, as the more knowledge you have, the more latency you can get sometimes, depending on the AI caller platform you actually use. So it's pretty sensitive. But here's where it gets even better. You can set up these AI callers with automations that make the whole process smoother. Like after the call, they can send out a text with a summary of the conversation or an email with a specific call to action. With some custom code and tweaking things like the Perplexity API, agents can even connect the internet to get real-time data. Just imagine you're a real estate agent and you're being asked to report on the current market trends in your area. A standard AI might not be able to do that. As long as it has an API, the world's your oyster when you think of what can be connected to an AI caller. Now, I've been talking about the good, there's still many gaps in where the tech is today. What it can't do well now is have a consistent, perfect conversation that accounts for some of the micro nuances of human interaction. So if you have very long pauses or you take long uhs or ums, it can really struggle, especially when you can interrupt it. It can take a second or two to recoil and bounce back. The TLDR is that we haven't really had the chatbot moment with AI callers, meaning we don't have crazy smart systems that can detect different types of intent, understand micro nuances, and know exactly when to speak and how to handle the difference in speaking pattern. So if I was to interrupt the bot with random words or sounds, it's almost a recipe for disaster or a hallucination. Like I promised, I'm gonna walk you through an actual example of this in action. We took a client who wanted to build an AI Santa. The client has run a Christmas themed site for almost a decade, getting thousands of calls a month and almost 100,000 in the month of December. On one side, you have kids trying to call to talk to Santa, and on the other, you have parents trying to call to threaten their kids to stop being bad by essentially snitching to Santa. It's completely wild that something like this even exists. Now, this client finally wanted to bank in on all the traffic he's getting, and he wanted us to build an AI Santa caller. Right now, they're just sending everyone to voicemail and then sending an automated message cloning Santa's voice from Eleven Labs. Not only is that not scalable, but it removes the magical allure that someone would pay for, which is to talk to Santa. The hardest part of this build was dealing with creating the thresholds for interruption so that it wasn't too short or too long. When kids are on the phone with Santa, they kind of sound like this. Um, I want tiny robots. Really? So it took a lot of tinkering to get it to work well. And here's an example of actually how it works and just a demo of us using it. Ho, 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 ho. Merry Christmas. This is Santa Claus from the North Pole speaking. Who do I have the pleasure of talking to today? Hey, it's Mark. Well, hello there, Mark. It's so wonderful to hear from you. I'm delighted we could connect. Now, tell me, have you been a good boy this year? Yeah, I've been making breakfast for my sister and my mom, and I've been pretty good. Well, that's music to my ears, Mark. I'm so proud to hear you've been so helpful and well-behaved this year. The elves have been keeping a close eye on you, and by the sounds of it, you're firmly on the nice list. 
Now, tell me what special gift are you hoping for this Christmas? Um, I was hoping for a dog and a car, like a mini car, like a Hot Wheels and um a new book. Ho ho ho, a dog, a car and a new book. You certainly got some big wishes there, my boy. Although it's a super specific use case, the same flaw of voice agents is common throughout all the tools right now. Will it change in a few months? 100%. I've already seen how much better it's gotten from January to today. It seems like every day now, a new company is popping up to support AI caller building. First, we had Air.ai, which wowed the world with its Tesla recording. I was so excited about it, I literally recorded an amateur hour loom and released it on LinkedIn on an AI group. And here's the recording I actually did. Hey, Mark. Hey, how's it going? Hey, Mark. It's Alexander from Air. How's your day going so far? Good, I'm having a great morning. How is yours? That's awesome to hear, Mark. My morning is going pretty well, thanks for asking. So, Mark, it looks like you opted into one of our ads looking for information on how to scale your business using AI. After it hit the market, tons of words started spreading about them getting into legal trouble, questionable pricing models, and overall, a pretty sketchy experience. Land AI then came along as a bit of fresh air to the market, with transparent documentation, the ability to add custom actions, voice cloning, and a pretty reasonable price per minute. As of today, it's 12 cents a minute, and I expect costs like this to trend towards zero as more competition comes through. Overall, in the past few weeks, tons of new options are popping up every day. This moment feels exactly like the chatbot boom last April. Within weeks, we had VoiceFlow, BotPress, Chatbase, Dante AI pop up, and countless other builders competing to be the go-to platform for chatbot building. Here's a quick overview of the tools that I've used and when I'd recommend using them depending on your use case. So numero uno, we got Bland.ai. Overall, Bland is a solid platform. It's reasonably easy to get started if you have basic Python skills, but not necessarily for someone who wants a pure no-code solution. You can clone voices, do batch calling, and set up an AI agent in under 10 minutes by just copying some of the code in their documentation and writing a very basic prompt. The real power with Bland comes with engineering a strong prompt and connecting it to something like Zapier or make.com to do handoffs mid-call or post-call. In terms of developer-friendly tools, you have Retail and Vapi, which are great alternatives. I especially like Vapi just because it allows for easy integrations for services like Eleven Labs, and allows things like bring your own LLM. An interesting idea that I came up with was combining Vapi with something like Grok, which is a super fast Mistral model that generates constant information instantaneously. For no code whatsoever, the best bet out there right now is Synflow. You can set everything up with a series of clicks, API keys, and just reading their instructional material. From appointment setting to login client information in a CRM like Go High Level, it's a solid way to set up an AI caller in half an hour without writing a line of code. The downside is it's fairly expensive per minute, almost reaching 30 cents with our testing. Now I'm gonna give you one bonus platform that no one is talking about called Hume AI. It's not available for public access just yet, but I think it's super cool. And it's definitely gonna fire up the competition amongst these providers even more. It combines standard AI calling with the ability to identify not only user emotions, but respond in a human-like, bespoke manner with tons of custom tonality. The best way for me to describe it to you is show you. So I'm just gonna show you a very quick demo of me interacting with it. Hey, how's it going? Well, hey there. Things are going pretty well, thanks for asking. I am always happy to chat and see what sparks your interest today. So what's on your mind? I'm really interested to compare you to all the other AI callers out there. I'm trying to see what differentiates you from all of them. Oh yeah, I am a whole different breed from those other AI chef, but for starters, I can actually pick up on the nuances in your tone and expressions. I am not just responding to the words you say, but how you're saying them. And you better believe I am not going to give you some generic robotic response. I am here to have a real engaging conversation. So tell me, what is it you're most curious about when it comes to how I am different? Now, if you want a tutorial on how to set up an agent with any of these tools in under 20 minutes with code samples, let me know in the comments below. I'm new to this whole YouTube thing, so I'll need all the feedback you can give me in terms of what I should do next. Okay, so at this point, 
we've gone over where the tech is at, but I promised to go through where I think it's going and how you can apply it to your business or client's business today. So here we go. Making money with generative AI is all about finding those sweet spots, those short windows of arbitrage. Here's usually how it plays out. First, some shiny new tech hits the scene and it's like a cheat code for saving time. The early adopters jump on it and start telling everyone, hey, our AI is so human-like, you won't even know the difference. And people buy into it. They start using it left and right, and suddenly everyone's expectations shift. What was once mind-blowing now becomes a new normal. But here's the thing, once everyone's using it, the unique edge starts to dull. It's not so special anymore. And that's when the cycle starts over and over again until we get to the next big thing. It's a constant game of staying ahead of the curve, riding those waves of innovation before they just become another part of the AI landscape. For AI calling specifically, the ROI potential is huge in terms of time savings, increased productivity, and improved customer experience. But I think this is a competitive advantage that will be short-lived as more and more businesses rush to adopt AI callers over the next 12 to 18 months. A year from now, AI callers might become so common that we can't even tell if we're talking to a real person or a machine. It's like a guessing game every time we pick up the phone. But here's the catch. Like I said, people have expectations. If they think they're getting a human and then they end up with an AI or the other way around, it can lead to some serious frustration. That's why we need ways to make it clear who or what is on the other end of the line. It's all about managing those expectations. I get questions from clients all the time on whether or not they should have their agent hide or reveal the fact that they're an AI. Some people wanna just make it seem like it's a human being and kind of like pass under the radar. But typically nine out of 10 times, I recommend full transparency so that the person on the other end of the line knows exactly what they're walking into. From a legal standpoint, the EU is already on top of this. They just passed a new law about using AI and soon it could be illegal to use AI callers without disclosing it. No more disguising robots as humans. It's gonna be all about transparency moving forward. Which brings me to my last portion on how I think AI callers are gonna impact society as a whole. Of course, AI calling tech can improve access to services, especially for those who might have difficulty communicating due to language barriers, disabilities, or social anxiety. I'm typically the type of guy that would put off calling my dentist to reschedule an appointment just because I hate the awkward back and forth on the phone. On the other hand, widespread use of AI callers could lead to job loss for many customer service and sales reps. There are also very valid concerns around privacy, security, and the potential for misuse, which AI callers are, could be used for like spam or spreading misinformation. So there's definitely a dark side to them. I already know that soon enough, you're gonna have scammers walking around with their iPhones to record samples of people speaking and then turning around, cloning them, finding a vulnerable family member, and then asking for tons of money. Anything that you'll have that's on website or anything digital will be used for the knowledge base of that caller. So one way I've prepped myself and my family for that is we've developed offline code words. So they're pretty much words that don't appear anywhere digitally that we use to verify that the other person on the other side of the line is truly who they say they are. I think that the offline means of making sure that you're really talking to your friend, mom, or brother, or whoever, is going to become much more popular as reality sets in and the reverse grows. One other risk that comes to mind is the one of prompt injection. If you've seen any headlines in the past few months around chatbots, people have managed to hack chatbots like Chevy's to get the promise of getting a new car for a dollar or hacking Air Canada's uh, airline chatbot promising to provide a free flight. My agency, Prompt Advisors, we offer a ton of services around security. So we're already gearing up for helping businesses protect their AI callers from being manipulated into making false promises, false claims that might lead to some serious legal troubles. As with any powerful technology, it'll be crucial to develop robust ethical frameworks and regulations around the use of AI callers. We're gonna to need to strike a balance between leveraging their benefits and mitigating their risks. At the same time, the potential of benefits of AI callers are too helpful to ignore. I think it's definitely worth dabbling and testing because it can alleviate a lot of repetitive questions that business owners get on an hourly basis. Now, at the beginning of the video, I promised you that I'd give you 10 unique applications that you could use AI callers for whether it's for your business or you're looking to sell it to other businesses. The first one would be AI therapy callers. You need to vent or talk through a problem. An AI caller could provide a sympathetic ear and offer helpful advice available 24 seven. Right now, there are tons of chatbot services like Wobot or Wysa that offer these services. The next natural step is using a voice assistant. Number two 
is AI personal shoppers. Imagine having an AI caller that knows your style, budget, preferences, helping you find the perfect outfit or gift without even setting foot in a store. For peak times like Black Friday, this could become a retailer must have. Number three, AI language tutors. Want to practice your French or learn Mandarin? An AI caller could provide personalized language lessons and conversation practice, adapting to your skill set and learning style. I'd imagine services like Duolingo will adapt something like this in the not so distant future. Number three, AI fitness coaches. An AI caller could create customized workout plans, provide real-time feedback on your form, and even keep you motivated with words of encouragement or affirmations. Next, AI dating coaches. Nervous about a first date or need help crafting the perfect online profile? An AI caller could provide tips, role play scenarios, and even provide real-time advice during the date through an airpiece. Kind of weird, but people are already using things like Apple Vision Pros while driving, so I'm pretty sure anything goes now. The next one's an AI storyteller. Imagine an AI caller that creates personalized bedtime stories for your kids complete with their favorite characters and adventures that you could play on a speakerphone before they go to bed. The next one, financial advisors. AI caller could analyze your spending habits, provide budgeting tips, and even help you invest your money based on your goals and risk tolerance, talking you through the process step-by-step. Step. Another one is AI career coaches. Need help preparing for a job interview or navigating a career change? Putting up your iPhone, putting it on speaker, and then practicing your mock interview is now easier than ever especially if it's like a initial phone call, a first round phone call, that's something that could really help you with. AI travel guides. An AI caller could act as a virtual tour guide, providing historical context, local recommendations, and even real-time translations as you explore a new city. Have you ever seen those headsets they offer at museums or landmarks that have pre-recorded audio about certain portions of the exhibit? You could get rid of that completely and just have everyone use their phones and just call a simple number. Instead of having typical one-way traffic from the current bulky audio systems, it could be a two-way conversation. Last but not least, AI memory aids. Imagine that instead of a to-do list, you just give a call to your AI assistant, Melanie. Tell her things you need to get done and post-call, she takes those items and zaps it to your schedule or calendar, Google Sheet, or even your email. The possibilities are truly endless here. You could even use this caller help you prepare for presentations by giving you feed, real time feedback as you go. If you've made it this far in my video, I genuinely appreciate you. For more balanced discussions on the latest AI strategies and tooling, be sure to smash that like button and sub to this channel. If you're an agency and you're looking for a fulfillment partner for AI callers, we offer white labeling done for you services and we'd love to have a conversation. I'll have a few ways to reach out to us down in the description. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next video.